This is Raw as War, well, the first Raw after Armageddon. Let's take a look. 64 rated promo from RVD on the pre show. Talking about Mero and Sable. Rajon Farouk had a promo for 71. Open up the show with certain with our various Royal Rumble guys all looking to get in the mix here. All wanting a shot at the Rumble. Um, all pretty much announcing that, hey, I'm going to be in there, I'm going to be in there, I'm going to win it. That type of back and forth um, there from some of the participants. Mark Henry and Jim Cornette continue their strong promo ways with an 88. Then gave Mark Henry a win and he actually has great chemistry with somebody. Of course it's William Regal. Hey, gotta have great chemistry with William Regal. No one can have a bad match with William Regal. Not even Mark Henry. Henry 68. Wow. Regal 73. Henry probably struggled with the stamina. Yes, he did. But Regal got a good match out of him. Pretty incredible. Pretty incredible. X Park had 87 uh, promo announcing that it's time for him to win some gold. He might have an eye on the Royal Rumble, but he's also looking to perhaps enter and try out the lightweight division. Wow. We then gave him a match with Brian Christopher. X Park. I can't believe my eyes. 89. What just happened? 89 from X Park. Christopher 57. 82 match. What the fuck has just happened? I... X Park has just all of a sudden pulled off an incredible performance and. Alright, lightweight it is. 71 for the Rob Van Dam Mark Mara incident. Robbie, Rob RVD was coming to the ring backstage and Mark Mara jumped him from behind, hit him with a lead pipe and attacked him. And he was demanding he won his title back and it looked like we're going to have a hardcore title match but some of the officials backstage got involved and made sure that that did not happen. 71 rated so we are making a bit of a feud out of it. RVD versus Mark Mara. Why not? May as well. We got RVD for a few appearances so we may as well make use of him. Al Snow had a 54 rated performance when he took on Men's Tail, who had 41 for a 56 match. Quick little win for Al to get, keep his momentum building. Arch Kong, Bull Nakano backstage when Toyota confronted them and said, Look, I'm not afraid. I'm not going to back down from you at all. And I'm looking to try and take that title from you one way or another. 67. Hardy Boys had a 77 match against Los Barricas. That's really good as well. Matt 68, Jeff 77, BWM with a 250 bomb, we'll read that in a moment, just let me finish this off, Miguel 56, Savio 67, Savio's really good as well, 77, we gave the Hardy Boys the win, Undertaker returned, he's back, he says he's 100% medically cleared, and he wants his title shot at the Royal Rumble against the Big Show and Steve Austin, he wants both of them, he's got a, a bone to pick with both guys. Main event was a battle royal, a 10 man over the top battle royal. We tried our luck, we tried something different, and it was an 83 rated match. That's actually not bad. The Rock won the battle royal. The final four were Triple H, Dude Love, Kane, and and Triple H, uh, and The Rock, of course. Triple H had the final, was the final elimination. Kane had the most eliminations over the course of the match, 83 rated. So, always going to get a penalty for having so many competitors, but. You know, Mark Henry, even his bad performance was overshadowed by the brilliance of everyone else. So there you go. We put a few different guys in the match just to spice it up as well, but we had some of the top guys in there to close out the show, and that gives us an 87. Well, let's take a look. So we had Roar as War. Our rating was a 38.28. Okay, a little down from last week. Nitro, did they capitalize? 26.3, not really. Sid Vicious beating Savage in the main event for 76. Mm. Booker T beating Lodi. Piper beat Mysterio. Satin beat Hammer. Lepaka beat Ray Trailer. Hmm. Well, how's Sid Vicious going? 78 pop. So that's a gain, I believe, for him. Yes, they've actually gained him popularity. Can you believe it? Savage, 84. Still hanging in there despite being 46 now. Getting old. Booker T. 
64, okay, so they're not quite out of the mid card of Doom yet. Piper, has he still got some pop? 84, okay. Mysterio? 54, at least he got a match, that's something. Benoit can't get a match to save himself. Round two. So this is the WWF All Japan Super Show. It's All Japan versus the WWF. Let's see how we go. All right, so we had a meet and greet with the WWF women to get them all on the card to open things up for a 65. So all our women there involved. Um, yep, so we moved that along. And we had Takamichi Noku taking on Dick to Go for 69. Taka 75, Dick to Go 43. The Rock came out there and greeted the fans for 96. We didn't have a match for The Rock, unfortunately, so we just had had him cut a promo and said, I think that's good enough for the people, anyways. Our opening match is Jun Akiyama versus William Regal. Let's take a look at how this goes. It is a technical match. Um, we're hopeful that this will start the paper off. Um, a lot better. So let's see it. Okay, 79. So June 74, Regal 70. And that's not a bad way to kick things off there. And that will advance the storyline. So it won't ruin the heat, I think. It'll just keep it as is, which is fine. Um, and it was a technical masterclass. Regal was lacking a little bit of pop, but still, 79 rate of match. I'll take it. That's probably better than what... That's probably about what it was going to get. As good as it's going to get. Regal could have been a little bit better, but like I said, lacking a bit of pop in Japan. McMahon came out there and announced tonight is all about war. It will be all Japan versus the WWF, and they're going to go at it in a series of matches. And I think Vince will be annoyed that he lost the first one already, with Regal losing to Jun. All right, then we had Shamrock and Takayama. 78 rated, so still suffered from a lack of selling. Shamrock 90, Takayama 82. So, lack of selling there, which was our downfall. Not a lot you can really do about a lack of selling, and Takayama really has bad selling. Shamrock 90, uh, Takayama 82. Shamrock picked up the win, and then he beat the hell out of Val Venus and Takayama afterwards as well for a 95. Good stuff. Cactus Jack is back, and he announced that uh, he's going to face Sonita up next, and he cut a promo on All Japan as well. All right, so we've got Cactus versus Onita one-on-one. -on -one. We'll see how this goes. Hopefully, uh, it's good. It's a barbed wire match. Two guys, kings of the death of the death matches. All right, let's see it. 92 rated match. Onita with a crazy bump. Cactus Jack 94. Onita with an 80, and that's a much better match up there to get things going. Cactus picked up the win. 18-minute match, barbed wired, and a great contest between two great deathmatch wrestlers. Capped for a bit of short match length, so we could have had another minute or two on there to get it maybe a little bit higher. We were always going to get penalized, though, because our content, content risk was a little higher with the barbed wired match. Next up is Takata versus Stan Hansen. Not expecting a lot out of this one. We just kind of threw these two guys together. Um... But we wanted to give All Japan another win because obviously we had Shamrock win, we've had Cactus win. It's now two and one. So we wanted to even it up here with a win for Stan. We picked up one over Takata who had an 85. Oof. Stan, not bad, 70 despite being 48. Only a nine minute match. We just had the two go out there in a wild brawl. Stamina was always going to be an issue for Stan Hansen and declining and everything like that. But Takata was fantastic. We also... Um, I believe kept him strong so he didn't lose too much popularity because he was going to take the loss and now that evens it up at two apiece. Takata, very good. He can be very, very good for us indeed. All right, next is Masara versus Kane. And we had Masawa, what a promo. 98 rated promo there on Kane. Now, I'm not expecting anything brilliant because he is taking on Kane, but Kane does have the same amount of pop as he does in America here in Japan. So there's a good chance that Kane will still be strong. And Masawa has 90 pop. He's the most popular guy here in all Japan. So realistically, he could have probably should have made a vendor against Steve Austin, but we went with went with this one instead. It was going to be The Undertaker, but we had to change plans because Undertaker still has that uh, injury. He's not quite 100% just yet. Um, so, we'll have Kane instead. So, we'll see how it goes. Can he carry? 95 rated match. Kane, 87. 
Masawa 92. What a matchup there. 95 rated. And that's that's fine. Uh, we had Kane win thanks to a choke slam interference from the Undertaker. So that's how we got Taker involved there. He gets himself involved. Again, short match length. Now I was a little worried that Kane working 20 minutes would uh, suffer. Perhaps we could have had him go a couple more minutes indeed because he didn't suffer from a stamina penalty. But hey, 95 you can never be disappointed about that. This is uh, this is good. That's a very good matchup from those two. Next match is the Holy Demon Army versus Degeneration X, which I feel as though could be the match of the card. Two great tag teams going at it. Who's the better team? We're about to find out. I, I feel like this could be 99 plus, maybe 100. I'm hopeful it's 99. And the good news is that you know, actually, our storyline heat for the for this tag match probably won't be as strong as it is for our top singles matches here. So maybe it might drop down to maybe a 94 or so. But I'm hopeful. Let's take a look. The tag team match. 99. Whew. Akira, 96. Toshi, 100. Triple H, 100. Shawn Michaels, 100. 99 rated match. There you go. Well, I did say that I thought this was going to be the best match of the card. Both teams have excellent chemistry teaming with, it, with each other. 99. That's more like it. We had to give the win, though, to D-Generation X. This is when the WWF starts to pull away a little bit, starts to end up winning the pay-per-view between the two companies. Um, unfortunately, the top guys of the WWF are too valuable to lose to the top guys of Japan. We can't afford to risk that. We don't want to piss them off. Shawn Michaels has already ruined our roster. I don't want him coming for me next. I still like my job. I, I like booking the show. I don't want to lose my job. Shawn Michaels could convince Vince McMahon to get rid of me, so I don't want to, I don't want to piss him off. Kenta Kabashi promo on Steve Austin. As our main event will be Steve Austin versus Kabashi. Well, it's got big expectations now. It's got to beat 99. It's got to be close to 99. 99 or better or thereabouts to try and make this great. Can we do it? Can we do it? Can Austin and Kabashi deliver again? <sighs> All right. I'm hopeful. I'm going to say 99. Fingers crossed. Let's see it. Austin Kabashi, World Wrestling Federation Championship on the line. They've done it. 99, Kabashi 87, Austin 94. 25 minute match. Austin wins with the stunner. Defends the championship. 99 rated. And that will give us, well, we had two 99s on the show. Plus another 90 or thereabouts. Actually, a couple of 90s, didn't we? So this might be... This might be one of our best pay-per-views we've had. Let's have a look. Ooh, 97 rated pay-per-view. No bands, no celebrities. Just straight up, this straight up WWF action versus All Japan for 97. That, that is nasty. And that, I will admit that is nasty. That is a really good show. William Regal, he took the JRB and he was pissed. As Johnny Big Red with the 97 bits, thank you so much. It was an awesome show. We've got to make William Regal a little happier because he was a bit pissed off about it. Um, and I will give some love. Well, I've got to give the love to Steve Austin. He was brilliant. And you know what? Kenta delivered as well in the big, event, big main event. Let's give him all some love. 31,633 people saw the Tokyo Dome. All Japan... WWF, kill it. What an event. That was worth it. That was worth running back as well because... And now Undertaker's fully fit. Yeah, okay. That was worth running back as well just to make sure it was right. And it was. All right, so the Super Showdown. It was a big show. The Super Show between WWF and All Japan. Massive, massive. Um... We also got a 1.2 buy rate. So it's about 100,000 buys less than perhaps what we normally get. But hey, you can't complain with that. You can never complain with that. All Japan also did a TV show as well. Uh, Owen Hart and Johnny Ace was working. So was Kurt Angle and uh, um, Fuchi. So, well, it's interesting. We actually took a lot of the other guys away and put them on our show. So they became available for us instead of All Japan. So... A couple of our guys went and worked over in all Japan instead. 
uh, Owen and Angle to replace some of their top names that were missing. So that actually worked out pretty well. Now, I'm sure they probably would have had a better show if they had their own talent, but nonetheless, they were busy. They were locked up in a big major pay-per-view. And it delivered. Great show. All right, so all these guys are now gone. Um, so let's have a look, see if, if their popularity does help. So they went up to 25 pop. You can see globally all going up in popularity in all areas. Onita, wow, he went up a lot, didn't he? Uh, 11 to now in the 30s. So if we ever want to bring them back for another match, all of a sudden they become a little bit more viable for us um, now that they've gained a little bit there. Um, he actually went up as well in Japan for having a good match. So that's, that's something to keep an eye out for as well. Some of these Japan guys increasing popularity themselves after having such a good match. Um, Akira did not. Kabashi, um, so he now moves up to, you know, 43, 42. He might have already been around about that. No, he's flat 40 when we left him. And you can see his Japan pop actually went up quite a long way. Now, when the CPU does matches that are great, it doesn't really impact what happens. But when we do matches that are great in their areas, it will help. And he actually has gone up pop recently. Now, though, 85, 86, so that will really help out our all Japan friends. Even though they took the L, it does help their popularity out globally. Masawa, 35 as well. He's now 88. Now, he actually dipped in popularity. That's the one bad thing. He dipped a little bit in popularity because Kane beat him. Hmm, I didn't think about that, actually. All I know is our finances through the roof this month after doing two big pay views. Whew, crazy. And now, not, not to mention as well, we are international so all our TV revenue all our ticket sales everything like that is going to increase big time so we are on track to have our biggest month to date a massive massive month indeed so let's look at our popularity um, we're gaining a little bit here in the in the states but in Japan we're 81 across the board we have gained one popularity in Japan as well after that big event too um, in terms of our main event guys did we see any progression you never know they may have Kane got a big win Got him to 90, you know, Japan pop went up a little bit. Um, Cactus, yeah, Cactus went up to 92 after a great match. So that can help. You can beat people in Japan and gain popularity from the, the, their high pop in Japan and gain it into US. You can do that. So if you beat someone who's got high pop in Japan and you got low pop, and you, even if you have higher pop in America, you can still gain pop if you get what I mean. Michael's 91, Austin 91, very, very good. Um, very happy with that event. Overall, it's a cracking event. Probably our best one of the series, just about. Can't be far off. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for coming along to the stream. If you are watching on the YouTube, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Leave a like on it and subscribe to see more. Thank you very much for watching.